I'm channeling my inner child today and making some Barbie inspired jewelry. And just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. Hello, and welcome. My name's Carol. Barbie is all the rage right now. I'm sure at least you've li been living under a rock, you know that. And obviously pink is everywhere. And today I'm wearing my pink suit in honor of Barbie. Now, I thought that I would make some Barbie inspired jewelry. Now I'm not copying what was used in the movie at all. Uh, I know that some people have been doing that, but I wanted to make something that was inspired by Barbie, but wasn't actual an actual copy. We're going to be making a necklace, a bracelet, and some earrings today, so it's a big day. And uh, let's get started, and I will walk you step by step through the process of making these three items and talk to you about everything that you need. As you can see, I've got a lot of beads in front of me, and that's because we're making three projects. But when I looked at Barbie and her jewellery, especially from the movie, I watched the trailer and I've uh, watched, I've looked at some images of her online and I admit I haven't actually seen the movie yet, but it is on my list of things to do. So when I looked at her jewellery, I noticed some things that uh, were interesting. Firstly, Barbie lives in a plastic world, so all of her jewellery was made from plastic beads. And I challenged myself to make all of these pieces with only acrylic beads. That was quite challenging because I really, really wanted to go and grab a glass bead or, you know, you know. <laughs> I also uh, noticed that all of her beads were quite round. So there was, and they were round and smooth. So even though she wore the shell necklace in the movie, it was still quite smooth and rounded. So I kind of chose beads that looked that way as well. But having said that, I did choose these two beads which aren't round, smooth beads, and I'll talk to you about that in a sec. Everything else here I have is nice and round and nice and smooth, and I wanted to honor Barbie by continuing with that theme. So we're going to start off by making a simple stretch bracelet, and I'm going to be using these two beads here. Now you're going to say to me, Carol, you've just said that you're going to be using smooth beads and all plastic beads. And I swear to you, these beads are made of plastic. <laughs> they are not made of metal. They are silver, but they're smooth, uh, a smooth silver bead made of plastic, and they're covered in kind of a net. And this one is, no, it's not smooth. I totally admit that. But I do think that Barbie would really like it because it's really sparkly has a nice AB finish. It's called a faceted bubblegum bead, but honestly, it's kind of got like little nobbles on it. And I think she'd quite like it. I think Barbie would approve. As well as that for the bracelet, I'm going to be using some stretch cord. This elastic that I'm using, we do not sell this elastic. I would normally use a 0.6 millimeter clear elastic to make a bracelet like this. I'm only using this bright pink one for demonstration purposes. I've had it for years and I do not know where I got it from. If you can find a source for it, let me know and I will link it. But I'm sorry, I don't have a source for it. So what I'm doing here is just pre-stretching my elastic. And the reason I'm doing that is so that it won't stretch once I've made my bracelet. So give it a good stretch, hard as you can, without breaking it. I've folded my elastic in half. I'm going to take the folded end and I'm gonna thread it through my big eye needle. So if you haven't used a big eye needle before, the eye of the needle runs the full length and what it does is it makes it really really easy to thread thicker cord or elastic through. So I'm just going to thread my folded end through whoops, through the uh, hole there. You'd think it would be easy but for some reason today I can't do it. And the other thing I'm going to do is take my other ends and I'm going to put my bead stopper on that other end. If you haven't used a bead stopper before, it's a little spring and what you do is you put your thread inside it and it stops everything falling off. It's a wonderful invention. I've got my elastic threaded. Some people, uh, they get confused and they put the needle inside the loop, but we don't want to do that. We want the loop going through. So we've got four strands coming out of our needle. If you haven't made a stretch bracelet before, I'll leave you a link in the description box below and up the top here for a video I did all about how to tie the knot because I won't be showing you in depth today. So what I'm doing is just alternating these beads. I started with a bubblegum 
and then I'm putting on a silver. I'm just going to continue that till I've got six of each on my elastic. So did you have a Barbie when you were young? Let me know. Tell me in the comments section, which Barbie did you have? <laughs> I desperately, desperately wanted a Barbie doll. But here in New Zealand, in this, it would have been in the probably late 60s, early 70s, Barbie dolls were really expensive. I can remember begging my mum to buy me a Barbie doll, but they were $29.95. By that, that time, it was quite a lot of money. <laughs> And um, she wouldn't buy me a Barbie doll because she said they were too expensive. And I, so I got a Babs doll, which was available at the supermarket for $1.99. I was very, very upset about the fact that I wasn't allowed a Barbie. But looking back, I actually applaud my mum for not jumping on the bandwagon of the marketing hype and buying me something that was way overpriced at the time. I've threaded my, all my beads on. So there they are. On the camera, they look a little bit more purpley than they are pink but they are pink all right so now I'm going to tie my knot so just going to take my bed stopper off as I said if you want an in-depth on how to tie the knot please watch the video on the ultimate knot so what I'm going to do is put my ends through the loop and pull it up you can see this cord is threading this elastic is, is shredding so that's why I don't use it anymore the clear one that I have in stock is much more strong so yeah, I'll be taking this apart once I've finished this. To tie it, now that I've pulled it up, I'm hoping I can tie it because it's feeling very fragile. I'm going to put my uh, two ends underneath and through the bracelet. Then I'm going to tie my knot and go through underneath again and tie my knot. And I'm going to do that two more times. In the other video I do it with some big cord so you can actually see exactly what I'm doing. Okay so there's my knot looking horrible because it's all shredding but you know that's just the way it is today and I'm just going to chop those ends off. Now you could thread them through if you wanted to, you could put a dab of glue on them, I'm not going to do either of those things. So there's my bracelet and I haven't tied it as tight as I would normally uh, simply because I was worried that elastic was going to break which is why I don't use it. So there's the bracelet, do you think Barbie would be happy to wear that? Okay so that's project number one, next we're going to be making some Barbie-esque earrings. Now, as I said, I will leave you links in the description box below to a blog post which contains all of the materials that you need to make these projects. We're going to be using these rather large bubblegum beads. And as you can see, they're nice and round and shiny, and I think Barbie would really approve. As well as that, we're going to be using some of these acrylic flowers. And we're going to be using some 10 millimeter acrylic clear uh, transparent beads and some six millimeter clear transparent beads. And they're rolling everywhere. We're going to also be using a little heart charm. As well as that, we're going to be using some 20 gauge, 22 gauge wire. This is a half hard wire. And so I'm gonna start with that. I'm going to make my loops and I am going to be using my one step looper to make my loops. If you don't know what a one step looper is, I'll leave you a link to a video about how to use it and how it changed my life. You could also make these loops with your standard round nose pliers, but I'm being lazy. <laughs> it's funny, when I don't use my one step looper, people ask me why I'm not using it. So I've got my loop, and I'm going to start at the top. Usually, for some reason, I always start my earrings at the bottom, probably because when you put them on a head pin, you start from the bottom. But today we're starting at the top, just to be different. Okay, we are putting on one of our clear Beads. My pink ones here are running away everywhere. One of the, <laughs> go back, one of the clear beads, the flowers, then we're going to put on our big bubble gum and another one of the flowers. Now these flowers, you want to uh, face them in opposite directions. So basically you've got each flower pointing down, pointing towards the bubble gum bead. Okay, now we're just going to put a loop in the end. There we go. Now I need to make sure my loops are going in opposite directions. 
So just grabbing my pliers and holding my loops and they're almost in opposite directions but not quite so just making sure that they are and how you do that is just hold your loops on either side in your pliers and just turn one hand down while holding the other one straight. Okay so there you go. There is our first component. Next I am going to grab another piece of wire and I'm going to make a loop. go and I'm going to put on one of my little um, flowers. Now you want this one to be facing down and what I mean by that is the kind of hollow part of the flower is facing down. And then I'm going to put on my large 10 millimeter and my clear bead and I'm going to make another loop. These are super easy to make. Okay, and I want to make sure my loops are going in opposite directions again. Did really well today, both of them were almost there. Now I'm going to put my ear wire on next. And this is, as I said, I'm doing this in a weird way today. To put my ear wire on, I'm holding it this side of the loop, which is the side that opens in my the jaws of my pliers. Then I'm going to take my ear wire in between my thumb and my forefingers and I'm going to twist down so that the loop opens that way. Then I'm just going to pop that component on, that top one, with the large bubblegum bead. And to close it, I just reverse the process. So holding it between my thumb and my four fingers and just closing it up. So that's what I have. Now I'm going to attach this one. And I'm going to do that using the same process. So finding the side of the loop that opens, which is this side, holding it between my fingers and my thumb, opening by rotating down and popping that on. Now the reason why I made sure that my loops were going in opposite directions is because I want to make sure that my charm hangs the right way. So that's what I have now. So I need to make sure that my charm is going to face the front when the earring goes through my ear. So this is the front of the earring which you see when you put your earring in. So I want my charm to be facing that way. By having those loops going in opposite directions and these ones going in opposite directions, this one should be right. So I'm going to open that bottom loop and I want to make sure my little charm is going the right way. So to do that I'm going to kind of hold it like that so that I know that the charm needs to go up or face me and just closing that up. Did I get it right? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> and no I didn't, I got it the wrong way around. So you can see here my charm is back the front so I'm going to take it off and turn it around. Easy enough to do. So there is my earring with its charm facing the right way and uh, yeah it's looking very kind of Barbie-esque. And I've actually made another one, so there's my pair of earrings. Next we're going to be making the necklace. Now I didn't want to exactly copy Barbie's clamshell necklace. Um, if you want to do that, I've seen people do fantastic tutorials making them out of clay, and I can leave you a link to one of those down below. What I wanted to do though is take that theme, I really liked the fact that she had those three focals across the bottom of the necklace, or across the, the front, and so I decided to use that. I'm going to be using these beautiful acrylic petals instead. I've always wanted to make something with these, so this seemed like the perfect opportunity. As well as that, I'm going to be using some six millimeter jump rings. Now the gauge here is important. These are 0.6 millimeter, six millimeter jump rings. Okay, they needed to be thin enough so that I could put them through these tiny wee four millimeter vacuum beads. Now these ones have an AB finish so they're nice and shiny and Barbie related as well. So I'm going to make the three focals first. I'm going to take my two pairs of chain nose pliers and I'm going to open a jump ring. And I'm going to feed on my acrylic petal and then one of my acrylic vacuum beads. 
Now the reason I'm doing this is to cover the hole. Then I'm going to close up my jump ring. Now I do need to make sure that my jump rings are really well closed because I'm going to be feeding them onto tiger tail and I don't want them to fall off. So just fiddle with it until you get your jump ring nicely closed. And that is what I have. And what will happen is when it hangs on the tiger tail, this bead will come down and cover the hole, which is what I want. So I'm going to repeat that a couple more times. So now I've got my three petals with their jump rings and their little beads attached. Next I'm going to cut a piece of tiger tail. Now I want my necklace to be 42 centimetres long. Uh, so that is about 16 and a half inches. So I'm going to just cut a reasonable size piece of tiger tail here. Always good to err on the side of more rather than less. And I'm going to put a bead stopper on one end. And now I'm going to start threading on my beads. So first I'm going to put on one of my focals that I've just made. Then I'm going to put on a four millimeter. And I have here these six millimeter eco-friendly transparent beads. So I'm putting on two of those. And I'm going to repeat that. And one more of my four millimeter. So that's what I have now. And I'm going to repeat that two more times. So putting on my next focal. Just making sure when you put on your focal that your um, little four millimeter is sitting in the front. And then repeat that run. So tell me, have you seen the Barbie movie and what did you think of it? There's been quite a lot of controversy about it and I can't comment because as I said I haven't seen it yet but I'd really love to know what you thought of it if you've seen it. Okay so there's the focal part of my necklace and then I'm just going to string on some beads to finish my necklace. Now I'm going to start with a four millimetre. So what I wanted was to have a four millimetre on either side of my focal pieces so that there was two together like that. Now I'm going to put on two of my little transparent ones, six millimetre, and basically I am going to repeat that until I have done that 12 times. So there's my necklace uh, all threaded up. The only thing important to remember is you start your run with a four millimetre here and you finish with a four millimetre. And they're just two, one, two, one. Really basic. I'm using a lobster clasp here, so remember if you're right-handed, you want your lobster clasp on your right-hand side, and if you're left-handed, you want it on your left-hand side. Now this necklace is one way, so we need to make sure that we do that. Before we put our lobster clasp on though, we're going to attach a jump ring to it. I like to attach my clasp with a four millimeter jump ring. It's just, in my opinion, it looks neater, but you can do whatever you like. If you've got a six one, a six millimeter, that's fine, use your six. So I'm just opening my jump ring and popping on my clasp and then closing the jump ring. Once again, because it's going on to tiger tail, you want to make sure it's really, really well closed. No gaps. Okay, so that is my clasp there with its little four millimeter jump ring attached. Now we're going to take the right hand side, because I'm right handed, out of our bead stopper. And we're going to get our crimp bead. Now I'm using the magical crimping tool, so I'm using magical crimp beads here. You don't have to use these crimp beads, you can use any crimp beads that you like. So feed on your crimp bead and then feed on the four millimeter jump ring. Like that. Now you want to go back down through the crimp bead, making sure that you catch that clasp in the loop. And I'm gonna go down through a couple of beads as well just because I like to. Some people do, some people don't. It's, it's personal preference. So just pull it all up to the end, like that. And I'm going to take my magical crimping tool and I'm going to squeeze the crimp bead. These magical crimping tools are amazing. They make your crimp bead look like a little round bead uh, rather than being a squashed bead. So I've squashed it once, I'm going to turn it give it a half turn and squash it again. 
just double check that it's nicely stuck there. And there is my crimp bead. And it negates the need for a crimp cover, which if you've watched before, you know that they're my nemesis. I hate them and I never use them. So there we go. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to trim off the end here of my, the short end of my tiger tail. And then run all the beads up to the other end, just making sure that I got that tiger tail tucked inside those beads. All right, so that's one end done. Next, we are going to do the other end, and we're going to put a jump ring on the other end. Now, you do need to make sure before you start that the jump ring is really well closed. So I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers. Can you see that? It's not quite closed. And I'm just going to give it a wee, wee wiggle. If you haven't used jump rings before, by the way, I'll leave you a link in the description box to a video all about how to use them. There we go, my jump ring is nicely closed. Right, taking off my bead stopper, threading on my crimp bead. Now when I'm using crimp beads, I like to put them on the mat and kind of fish for them with the end of the tiger tail. It just, I find it easier than trying to thread them on. Now I'm going to put on my uh, six millimeter jump ring. And just like before, I'm going back down through the crimp bead and through a couple of beads. So there's my end, just pull it all up. Now when you're pulling it up, make sure that you don't want any gaps between your beads, but you also don't want it to be too tight that the necklace won't move. What I'm doing here is, I'm kind of gone as far as I can and I've still got a gap, so I'm pulling the crimp bead down again and then pulling it. And what that does is it just gives you a little bit more flexibility. So just make sure everything's still moving. I've just got a little bit of space. So taking my magical crimping tool and I'm going to give it a squeeze, turn it around and give it another squeeze. This magical crimping tool makes uh, crimping so fast and so easy. In my opinion it's well worth the investment. Alright and I'm going to chop off the end of my tiger tail there, getting in right in there with my cutters. By the way, if you want to make the jewellery I'm wearing today, um, the Barbie necklace I'm wearing, I made it up the other day. Uh, it's using some 10mm imitation gemstones and some of those 4mm vacuum beads and it has a Murano pendant on. I'll leave you, I, I haven't done a tutorial for this one. Let me know if you want me to, but it's really quite basic and I can leave you a link to these things in the uh, blog post as well. The earrings, are, I can leave you a link to this tutorial. They are my chandelier heart earrings and bracelets. Okay, so I'm feeling very Barbie. I have on my spring bracelet here, which is a stretch bracelet made with uh, 16 millimeter bubble gum beads. And this is another spring bracelet. This is a memory wire bracelet. So I will leave you links to those as well in the description box um, to, yeah. That's what I'll do. <laughs> All right, so my necklace is now finished. There it is. It's very cute. I like it quite a lot. I can see a lot of young girls that I know would really, really like this one. Now, I didn't go all out bright pink with this because most people don't wear bright pink like that. I wanted to be a little bit more subtle. And let's face it, Barbie, she, she does the colors of pink. She does all the variations of pink. She does bright pink and soft pastel pink. So I went kind of soft pastel with this. Obviously the earrings are a brighter pink. So I covered my bases there as well. So let's talk about the materials that I used because we're doing everything backwards today. I did the tutorial first, now I'm talking about the materials. So for the bubblegum bracelet, I used 22 millimeter bubblegum beads, the faceted ones, and I used 12 millimeter acrylic net beads. For the earrings, I used two of the acrylic shiny beads and they were 20 millimeters. I used two of the fuchsia uh, 10 millimeter beads. I used two of the clear six millimeter beads. I used six of the clear flowers and I used two of the hearts. As well as that I used some 22 gauge 
uh, half hard wire and I used a pair of stainless steel flat back ear wires. For the necklace I used three of the Lucite uh, rose petals and they are 28 by 25 millimeters in the color rose. I used 35 of the white four millimeter vacuum beads. I used 56 of the pink six millimeter vacuum beads. I used a 12 millimeter lobster clasp. I used four six millimeter by 0.6 millimeter jump rings. And I used four, four no, I used one four millimeter jump ring. I used some silver tiger tail and I probably used about 50 centimetres of that and I used two magical crimp tubes. Tools, I used my flush cutters, I used my magical crimping plier, I used two pairs of chain nose pliers and I also used my one step looper. I also used my big eye needle and I used a bead stopper. So that is it. I think I've gone through everything we used now and we've talked about everything we did. Remember that everything will be laid out in the blog post that accompanies this video and it is the top link in the description box below. Remember if you enjoyed this one to give us the thumbs up and also subscribe if you'd like to see more and hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching today. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.